Thank you, Brandon, for your lovely words. Hi, everyone. My name is Elliot Easton, and I'm very proud to say that I play guitar with the Cars. Thank you to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame board for bestowing this honor upon us. It's a thrill to be here and to join the ranks of all the incredible artists who have already been inducted. I'm blessed to be in a band that has in some way made a contribution to the music, and this is quite an acknowledgment of that tonight. Quick story, just so you know how deeply this thing goes. In 1956, I was three years old and I saw Elvis on TV. I immediately got a comb and a glass of water and asked my mom to comb my hair in a spit curl, just like Elvis's. Then I grabbed my Mickey Mouse guitar and checked myself out in the mirror to try and look like as much of a rock and roller as a three-year-old could. So from that moment to lead to this one tonight has been a long, crazy, twisted river, and I wouldn't change a moment of it. How lucky I am to have realized and to live my childhood dreams in a way there's still sort of a dreamlike quality to all of this. Just a few words to thank some of the people who have helped us so much along the way. First, I'd like to thank Jeff Kramer and the rest of the crew at OK Management, Danny, Sydney, Cindy, Brian. You've all done such a great job with the band and have made it possible to do more than I could have ever imagined. Thanks, Jeff, for always steering this ship in the right direction. Thanks must go to Joe Smith and Electra Records for believing in us and giving us a chance to make a record in the first place and get the whole ball rolling. And much later, thank you to Rhino Records for doing such a great job with our reissues and deluxe editions of our albums. I still call them albums. Thank you to our producers, Roy Thomas Baker and Mutt Lang, for doing such a great job of capturing what we do in the best possible light, enhancing the music and making it sound great on the radio. It sounds great on stereos, too. In the very early days of the band, we had an angel in the form of a lady named Maxanne Sartori, a top DJ at WBCN in Boston from the city's biggest FM rock station. And Maxanne did an amazing thing. She began to play our demo tape in heavy rotation alongside all the biggest records of the day. It actually started being reported in radio tip sheets like the Gavin Report and the rest of them. So it would say something like, the cars, just what I needed, and then the column where the record label would normally be, it said tape. So that really got the attention of the A&R staffs and labels and representatives of major labels started flying up to Boston from New York to check out this band, The Cars, whose demo tape got so much airplay that it was actually being reported on a national level. Max Ann did that, and we will forever be indebted to her for her incredible support in getting this thing going. Thank you. Thanks must go to our crew, who were there with us from the beginning and stayed till the end. Some are no longer with us, but the rest will be there whenever we do something new right up to the present day. Keep going, keep going. Rick, Ben, and Greg to my fellow bandmates. Greg, who did so much to help define the band's distinctive sound and who always helped foster a sort of workshop atmosphere in the studio and who I had such a great creative time with, bouncing ideas off each other from melodic lines, hooks, arrangements, and all the rest of the process whereby a great song is made into a great record. Well, everyone in the band worked on all that stuff and everyone's ideas were always taken into consideration. David, whose rock-solid drumming always provided the foundation for all that followed, and for his contributions to the band's image, naming the band, creating our logo, and art directing all of our iconic album covers, working tirelessly with the label's art department, making sure that they always look great. And we all know one thing for sure. It all begins with a great song. Without that, none of this would exist. The music business, radio, the Hall of Fame, all of it. Without a great song, there's nothing. 
And in Rick Ocasek, we had an incredible songwriter whose songs, that's right, whose songs gave the band such a wonderful platform and framework for the rest of us to be creative and do the best work of our lives. And they still sound great today. Thanks, Rick. Finally, Benjamin, who's sadly no longer with us, but whose incredible voice, solid bass playing, and good humor was such a huge part of the band's success. And not a bad looking guy either. Cleveland is Ben's hometown, and they've always been very proud of him here. And I know that wherever he is, he's so proud on this special occasion, and even more so that it would occur here of all places. To my wife, Jill, who spent many years in this business of ours as a senior VP at A&M Records, and my daughter, Sydney, your love, support, and patience in putting up with the life of a musician has meant more to me than I could ever express in words. I love you both to the moon and back. Finally, that's right. Finally, to my mom, a Juilliard-trained singer who is incredible, on a level with a Garland or a Rosemary Clooney, and gave it up, gave up a career to raise a family, but who gave me the gift of music and let me pass that gene on to my daughter, who is an amazing singer. So you might say that music is sort of the family business. My mom was my biggest fan and shared in the joy of our success, and I always felt like I was doing this for both of us. And I know that she's smiling down at me from wherever she is, and is so happy and proud tonight. We did it, Mom. Thank you all very much. That, that statue's too heavy a burden for me to hold. So in 1964, I was 11 years old, and I'd been taking piano lessons for three or four, three or four years, and frankly, I was kind of getting bored with it and wanted to give them up. But one day, my dad came home and said, well, I've got tickets to go see the Beatles. But if you want to go, you've got to sign up for another year of piano lessons. Back then, I thought that was a pretty good deal. And I still think that's a pretty good deal. So I'd like to thank my dad for that pretty good deal. And the other side of the story is that I have to acknowledge that if it weren't for the Beatles, I don't think it ever would have occurred to me that I wanted to be in a band. I'd like to also say thanks to Roy Thomas Baker, who produced the first four Cars albums and helped define the sound of the cars. Roy came to see us play during a snowstorm in Massachusetts with about 20 or 30 people in the audience in a high school gym, and he still agreed to produce our first album on the spot. Thanks, Roy. And I'd also like to thank Mutt Lang for his contribution to the Heartbeat City album. If you ever worked for the cars, I'd like to say thank you. And there's a few that I'd just like to mention by name. Andy Topeka, Tom Moore, Joe Estrella, Brian Sklars, David Hegelmeyer, Julia Channing, Gene Amoroso, Steve Berkowitz, Richard Fernandez, Elliot Roberts, and Lookout Management. And I'd like to say thanks to Jeff Kramer and everybody at OK Management. And I'd especially like to say thanks, in particular, for springing for the extra tables for tonight. <laughs> and I have my own personal Hall of Fame that I would like to say thanks to. My friends Mark Volman and Howard Kalin, whose history speaks for themselves, with the Turtles, the Mother of Invention, and on their own as Flo and Eddie. They were probably the closest thing to having mentors that I ever had. I'd like to give a nod of appreciation to Todd Rundgren, who's been one of my musical heroes <laughs> since before I was ever in the cars. And I'd like to say thanks to Martin Mull, who gave me my first professional job in the music business. Believe it or not. 
<laughs> and I'd like to say thanks to Kraftwerk and Devo just for being so good. And I'd like, to, I'd like to say thanks to my family for being here tonight. My wife and Elaine and I got married the same year the cars started. So she's seen it all. My kids, Ian and Annie, are here tonight. I love you guys. And I'd like to say thanks to the Cars fans who are the real reason we're here. And I know that some of you voted for us every single day in the uh, fan poll. Not only this year, but the two previous years when we didn't get in. <laughs> and so, thank you very much for that. And finally, I'd like to give my acknowledgement to Ben Orr. How fitting that we are in Cleveland tonight. Without Ben's innate talent and his rock star good looks, it's unlikely that we would be up here tonight. Thank you very much. I'd really just rather play, but um, this is a great honor. That guy's right. Um, we've been together off and on for 42 years. You can look up our history on a line, so I won't mess with that. But um, also, I thank everybody on album covers, but I've never thanked them for letting me play in the band. So thank you guys. Um, I can't believe that I'm here in, and I will be in a Hall of Fame with musicians that met, have meant so much to me. Uh, I can't even describe what, what that's like. Everybody knows about the power and glory of rock and roll the magic, and it's, it's here, yeah. So, so thank you very much. Hey. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, start off with a couple of little-known facts about the Cars. Uh, when the band first started, uh, Ben was supposed to be the lead singer, and I was supposed to be the good-looking guy in the band. <laughs> but uh, after a couple of gigs, I kind of got demoted to the songwriter. So I went with that one. Uh, but obviously, it's hard not to notice that uh, Benjamin Orr is not here. Uh, he would have been elated to be here on this stage uh, in his hometown. Uh, it feels quite strange to be up here without him because uh, we miss him and love him dearly. Um, so anyway, let's say that uh, I want to thank the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for uh, in, uh, inducting us. Uh, we always like to be abducted. Um, <laughs> And uh, firstly, I'd like to thank my wheelchair grandmother for forcing me to sing in the parlor in front of her friends when I was five years old. Uh, she also had the nerve to buy me a guitar to Sears and Roebuck when I was about 14. And uh, I heard this song on the radio called uh, That'll Be the Day by Buddy Holly. And uh, I thought, you know, I have to start uh, playing guitar. Uh, so I have to thank her for that. I also uh, would like to thank my manager, uh, Jeff Kramer, my closest and dearest friend uh, at Lookout Management. And I'd like to thank Cindy uh, Osborne there and Danny Bernard and Brian uh, Higgins. And I know there was a little mention about Roy, Roy Thomas Baker. I have to thank him. He was a wonderful producer. He kept us laughing in the dark. And uh, it was a perfect storm. Uh, eccentric Roy uh, took us to London, England, and we recorded our first album in 12 days. So that was great. Um, <laughs> we, um, during our uh, legendary days, <laughs> We had Elliot Roberts as a manager, 
uh, during our growing years. I have to also thank Electra Records. Joe Smith back then was the guy who signed us. Uh, that was probably a thousand years ago. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Peter Thal and this guy named Bert Padell who took care of us in the 80s. Uh, Richard Fernandez, our road manager, has, has been with us for almost, I guess, every tour we ever did. Always got us where we wanted to go. Uh, David Hagelmeyer, who's our right-hand man. I wanted to thank, gotta, gotta thank Brandon Flowers for all the wonderful adjectives. Um, <laughs> uh, I wanna uh, thank Scott Schreiner from Weezer, who's gonna be playing bass with us tonight. Um, also, uh, Mario Testani, he's the guy who's watching our chips. Uh, you know what chips are, it's like kind of money. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti and uh, Richard Brodigan and even Bob Dylan for just uh, writing the kind of words they can write. Um, but anyway, uh, I wouldn't be standing here at all if it wasn't for Benjamin Orr, Greg Hawks, and David Robinson. And um, I, I think they're the, really the sound of the cars. Um, most importantly, uh, I'd like to thank my loving family because uh, they know me pretty well, but they uh, still like me anyway. <laughs> so, I lived in Cleveland for a while. <laughs> Uh, it was actually the first place I ever played music in front of people. And um, it, was at a ha it was at a hootenanny uh, here, and I think it was about uh, 20 blocks away. So um, I've only moved this far up the street for all those years. So good night. <laughs>